I tend to use a, an analogy to, to explain what MS does, um, and I tend to liken it to the brain being a distribution centre, the nerves being a road network, and the impulses which control everything that the body does as vehicles travelling along those roads. Now, along those roads, um, something has happened. There's been a pile-up or a road blocked by a falling tree. That message now can't get through. And if you think about those messages controlling what we do with our body, the information that we get back from our body to the brain, if those signals become interrupted, then they can lead to a wide range of different symptoms. Um, they can include motor control, so if you're trying to move your hand, for example, if that signal can't travel the way it would normally do, it's got to take a different route. Sometimes that will take a, a long time to happen. Sometimes those signals can't find their way, get totally lost, never make it there. Or sometimes they get there, but they are so tired by the time they get there, they become very weak. So if you think about the body being controlled by all of those nerves impulses, it really is a huge plethora of symptoms. And yes, I mean, this is a, one of the fascinating things about MS, is the variability of it, uh, not only in its disease course, whether people are relapsing and remitting or progressive, but also uh, how it starts, their first episode, whether it affects the eye or whether it affects their foot, uh, and it can be different in different people. Now, as far as we understand, it seems to be a random process of where the inflammation happens in the central nervous system. But there are certain conditions where it happens more often in the eyes or in the spinal cord. So in future years, we might understand why it's different in different people. But currently, we tend to think of it as a, um, a random distribution of where the inflammation first occurs and then when it later occurs in a different spot, hence the name multiple sclerosis.